So I have the DJI, one sec, the DJI Ronin S, C, S, C, yeah. Hey you, my name is Ethan. Welcome to the weekly Wednesday vlog. As you have guessed, I have not purchased this gimbal. This is borrowed from my friend Addis. There should be a poppy thing somewhere. So he's got it a while back and I'm still planning to do a proper review, but because the vlog's coming up tomorrow and I have this in my house, I might as well do a first impression hands box, well, hands on unboxing thingamajig majig. I shot an event with it with Addis the other day and the experience is very different. At first it was like, oh my god, awesome, it's a gimbal, and you're like playing around with it, doing all these cool shots, but after a while you realize there are just certain times when it is just a tiny bit off and it doesn't get you the shot you want. Now I know I'm super inexperienced when it comes to using a gimbal, I've never used it before, this was my first shoot without any significant practice, but I'm also following a bunch of creators online and a lot of them, in some rare occasional situations, they throw their camera off the gimbal and shoot handheld. And they say the same thing, a gimbal is awesome and it's great for certain purposes, but in some cases, you just can't beat handheld. It's awesome, it's lightweight, it's got a super long lasting battery, it's got a bunch of modes, you can control it with your phone, you can have some motion tracking and things like that. But those are kind of very niche things that you might occasionally use for some creative purposes. They're not like an everyday shooting, just creating your average bureau for your average event or commercial shoot. Inside, is obviously a bunch of accessories and the gimbal itself. Now, I'm not gonna do like a whole unboxing thingamajig because online is full of that. We're pretty late with this review, even though we got this drone pretty fresh when it just came out. We just didn't have the chance and opportunity to do a full review back then. But I will do a hands-on definition. Maybe I'll do something contrary to what usually people do instead of making like, you know, 10 cool things about the, the DJI Ronin. I'm gonna do, you know, 10 reasons you do not want the Ronin SC. So it's really compact, it's very easy to balance and you can get to work within five minutes of arriving to your project. Obviously there's the battery handle. It's kind of annoying that they didn't do a charge port on the hand, uh, I mean on the body itself. No, no, no. On the handle itself because then you can have se several handles charging at the same time. You have to connect the handle to the body and then charge the body as in charge the handle through the body and then you know it shows you a little charging thing down there. I'm obviously not here to diss the gimbal. It's a really awesome tool. It can come in super useful in certain situations but you know till now I've been like oh my god I need a gimbal. Oh my god I need a gimbal and honestly I've been looking at the um, Weeble Lab from Jiyun or however you say their brand name and now they have the Weeble Lab S which is lighter and better and everything and it's really cool but just having a chance to play around with this really got me kind of up to par on what it's like to shoot with a gimbal and now you know I still want a gimbal I still think it's awesome for some shots but now it's not like you know number two or three on my list of equipment priorities maybe number five something like that just because I know there are certain things that might uh, take my work up to the next level in a more significant way than a gimbal would. The biggest problems I've had is actually focus. Maybe it's because my camera is not as good as the a7 III in terms of focusing. So it takes, sometimes it takes a while and it focuses on the wrong thing. And I'm used to shooting focus manual like the Jamie guy, the what's his name, James, James something. He usually shoots in manual focus and I totally understand that because I don't know, I just love shooting manual, it has a lot of control. Now, Potato Jet put out a video about how autofocus is really getting good and you should trust it more, but I guess with not top of the market cameras, it's still kind of lagging behind a little bit and I like leaning on manual focus a lot more. You can have faster transitions and you have more precise switching even though autofocus is more precise when it comes to actually focusing on a subject and especially tracking motion when it comes to going close or far. Now it works great on wide lenses. I imagine it works even better on super wide lenses and hopefully I'll get my hands on a 14 millimeter for my a7 II or the a7S II if I get that eventually. And that would probably make for some pretty epic gimbal shots. But on the 28 millimeter or even on a 50 millimeter with great autofocus and great depth of field, it just doesn't do it properly. Like one third of the shots for me doesn't focus how I want it to, even though it does do it what I tell it to do. Nonetheless, I think we're moving 
really fast into the future where gimbals and autofocus will be so on par that it's going to be literally be an extension of your hand and you move it around and control it maybe have you in some kind of brain connection thingamajig so you can you know do it remotely and if you have someone to do follow focus or maybe some kind of autofocus where a manual focus assistant can direct what an autofocus is to that's a pretty cool idea but regardless right now it is a tool a great tool but also just a tool it doesn't make magic for you you still have to know how to use it and when to use it and have to have a lot of practice to know how to use it well and do exactly what you need it to do so i guess this video is aimed to all those people out there who are drooling over the gimbals coming out like oh my god when can i have one it's great it's not perfect you might be a little bit disappointed if you're overselling it so take your time practice and believe me sometimes handheld you can do much more epic things than you can do with a gimbal kind of like when the glide cam was being popular with devon super Tram and everything and i was like glide cam glide cam glide cam and then i got it and i used it for a couple shoots and it's pretty much been under my cupboard ever since but that doesn't have its place it does take practice but you think it's here and it's actually here and that that is a difference thank you guys for listening to my rant and as always i'm gonna see you guys next week i think that was the most abrupt ending i have done in a long time also i'm using the the fifine microphone right here testing it one more time because tomorrow believe it or not is the first time that i'm going to be using it out in the field good luck to me